there you are digging a really groovy teacher on the internet and then you hear these fateful words chapter one i don't think is intending to teach us that God made the world in six consecutive 24-hour days. Oh, if that doesn't just burn your biscuits, nothing can chafe us theologically quite like hearing someone we respect say the creation account is simply poetic or allegorical. There are lots of big names who think exactly that. William Lane Craig, Norman Geisler, J.P. Moreland, Hugh Ross, Lee Strobel, and a slew of others. The Bible doesn't insist the earth is young. It says, in the beginning, God creates the heaven and the earth. It doesn't say what that time that was at. I am not a young earth creationist. I do not believe that the earth is 6,000 years old. I believe that uh, that view is not only scientifically wrong, but I also think it's theologically wrong. I think it, I think it is a misinterpretation, a misreading, a misunderstanding of the text. While we cannot read hearts, despite what CRT tells us, I suspect most Christian thinkers who reject a young earth model do it because it's just really hard to reconcile all that science with a young earth position. Just as Darwin had to somehow harmonize creation without a creator, professing Christians feel like they have to find a way to mush together old earth science and a young earth genesis. Unfortunately for them, there's a rather large fly in that ointment. I suspect another popular reason for rejecting young earth is that the age of the earth is believed to be just not that important. If you want to think the earth is 6,000 years or 6 million or billion years, what difference does it make? Answer... A lot. I like you a lot. <laughs> Let us endeavor to line up a number of arguments that will hopefully convince you to read Genesis not as poetry and not as allegory, but as real historical narrative. Number one, poetry is a specific genre of literature that evokes and an imaginative picture in our brains, an emotional response using language carefully selected, arranged for meaning and sound and rhythm. This is an example of biblical poetry. <clears throat> the mountains skip like rams, the hills like little lambs. Genesis 1 to 3 doesn't read like poetry. Number two, historical narrative. How do we know an author is trying to convey actual history? Well, they use specific details, proper names, accurate descriptions of reality. And that's how Genesis 1 to 3 reads. Geographical details, actual names, actual people. Besides, if Genesis 1 to 3 isn't historical narrative, then how do we know any text in the Bible is factual, including the Gospels? Number three, a yom is a yom. Some Christians who reject a young earth position argue that the Genesis creation account is just a very long amount of time, maybe millions or billions of years per day. Is that interpretation faithful to the text and Hebrew grammar? That would be a big negatory, my trucker friend. Moses uses numbers to describe each passing day on the first day, on the second day. He uses language to describe morning and evening of each day. You have to have a fair amount of imagination to overcome the Hebrew word for day, yom, which means yom. Number four, ra oh, if we evolved, then what do we do with Adam? Romans 5 says that through one man, that would be Adam, sin entered into the world and death through sin. So death spread to all men because all sinned. In Adam, if death weren't present in the world before Adam and Eve chose to disobey God, there's no possibility for the life, the death, and natural selection of creatures before the fall. Some old earthers and theistic evolutionists, they would say Adam and Eve were simply the product of millions, millions, and millions of years of evolution prior to the story of them in the garden. There's just one big problem. There are more, but Let's focus on one. If we believe, Paul, that death entered when sin did, there can't be millions of years of evolution because that requires lots of death prior to the fall. Adam and Eve were unique creations, not the product of 
evolution. Number five, if Genesis 1 to 3 is poetry, then you've been getting ripped off on the Sabbath if you're only celebrating it for 24-hour days and God potentially rested for millions of years Contact your boss and tell him or her that you will not be in the office until, mm, give or take, 700 million and 42,000 A.D. The Sabbath was an actual day of actual rest, and that is why we only take 24 hours off. I get it. I really, really do. The pressure to not look foolish because science says the earth is old. You are a Neanderthal, if there were such things, for believing the earth is young. But that's what Genesis 1 to 3 teaches. And if that makes us look like fools, then so be it. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong and the insignificant things of the world and the despised. God has chosen the things that are not so that he may nullify the things that are so that no human may boast before God. <coughs> no! I'm not a worship leader, although I could be one with this much fog. Instead, encouraging you to give away the gospel at Halloween. Don't stub your toe in a slew of other booklets at wretched.org. Oftentimes, this stick can bring joy or it can bring fear, worry, and a very bad decision to abort one's child. Preborn.org, providing free ultrasounds that lead to the right decision 80% of the time. How much joy would you like to bring to a woman? How many babies' lives would you like to save? Please visit preborn.org slash wretched.